all four of the Tesla Model S window regulators are breaking usually more than once in the lifetime of the car. Let's take a closer look at why they are breaking, what is actually breaking and what the repair solutions are. First, let's look into why do those window regulators fail. And so we're here at the Tesla. And yes, I know this is not a Model S, this is a Model 3. My wife is currently in town with the Model S with our 2013 that has 225,000 miles on it, a rear wheel drive. And yes, it is winter time. And if that is shocking to you that we would drive such a car in the winter time, well, you need to go and click on our channel icon and go look at all the winter driving videos that we have with the Model S rear wheel drive and other cars. So, because there's really nothing to it. It's not a big deal at all. But because the S is not here, I got to show you on the three why uh, these things fail. And basically, this is the same thing here because we also have a, a frameless door. So there's no frame above the window. That's what's considered a frameless door. <clears throat> and most doors on uh, cars usually have a frame, right? That is the very common thing, except some higher end cars or convertibles, they have frameless doors. And uh, which is a design choice basically, but frameless doors require a few things so that you don't get any debris, any rain, moisture coming in through the window and wind noise. Wind noise is a big deal. So this has to be tackled in a different way. So here with the Model 3, it's the same thing. When I close the door, the window goes up. When I open the door, the window comes down, just like with the Model S. So there's no difference right there. That is the same thing here. The only difference here is, and I got an old, it's, <laughs> a little dirty here, it's been sitting outside. This is a window regulator from a Model 3 and you can see it is very similar but different. And uh, I don't know of any of these here failing actually. And so that's a good thing. <laughs> so uh, I think these are much better and they're just slightly different. But overall this style the style of window regulator that we have in the Model S is very common. Um, if you actually would go to an auto parts store and they could show you all the window regulators they have, you would find a lot of them that look almost exactly the same. So they're widely used. So it's not like it's a bad design from Tesla. No, this is a commonly used design, but it's always adapted to the door. So depending on the door size, the window size, front doors, rear doors, it has to be adapted accordingly. So, but the problem is it may be a bad design for this particular application with frameless windows. And why? Well, because of this here, up, down, up, down, right? Every time we open that door, that window gets jerked down just about an inch. So it's like somebody really jerks hard on it and stops immediately. That puts a lot of stress on this window regulator, ton of stress. So that is an issue right off the bat. There's some springs in there that keep tension on the cables and those springs absorb some of that shock. So that works, but with the Model S, it's still, it's a big window. It's, it's a big regulator. There is a lot of weight. There's a lot of pull on it and it is hard on that regulator. So just the regular opening and closing of the door makes the window go, makes the regulator work every time putting stress on it. So now that can get even worse. Why can that get worse? In the winter time, your window may be frozen. If you're in a climate like where we're at, your window can freeze. And you may have experienced that in other cars too, that you can't crank your window down if you still have one with a crank or you can't roll it down by pressing the button. It would just not go down because it's frozen. And it can be frozen anywhere basically around the outside of the window, but most commonly it will be frozen down here. Why down there? 
Well, let's say you're out, you're driving, it's snowing, the snow gets onto your window, it melts, it runs down here. So the water accumulates down here. You park the car, you get out, this water will freeze, the window will not move anymore. But, hey, when you do pull on the door handle, guess what? The window wants to go. The motor is there, the motor is powerful and it goes, bah, it wants to jerk this window down. But the window don't go because it's frozen. Now this really, really hard jerks on the window regulator, on those cables, on everything on there. And when it jerks as hard as it does when the window is frozen, these springs kind of give. And so on one side where it needs to pull the cable, there we have tension. On the other side, the cable comes loose and now it can jump off the pulleys. If we look at this regulator, you see the two cables. We got the cable here and we got the cable here. <clears throat> and that is when I pull in one direction, the one cable has tension, the other one comes loose. So on, on the, the other side. And so going up this way, it can come loose while this way has tension on it or the other way around and it can jump off these pulleys. So there's a possibility for the cable to come off. And that happened uh, on our Tesla. And when that cable comes off these pulleys, then your window, well, it falls down or at least it no longer goes, <clears throat> it no longer goes up or down anyway, but eventually it will fall down. Um, now with the Model S regulator, since it's so big and we got a big window, we got a lot of force on there and we have this plastic ferrule that has a tendency to break over time. And when that starts breaking down, that gives more slack on the uh, cables. And so they're more readily to jump off the pulleys. So those are all problems. Maybe I need to get into it real quick. Why do we need to raise and lower this? So on a regular door with a, a frame over it, when you roll the window up and you don't put it up all the way where it goes into the frame, you have definitely wind noise when you're driving and debris, rain may come in. So you always roll it up into the frame. Here, we have no frame. So we need to seal this window but just by closing the door and putting pressure on the seal right here, there's not enough pressure on the seal while you're driving to keep rain out, to keep debris out and have no wind noise. That doesn't, that's not possible. And we can't put more pressure on, I mean, the regulator is attached at the very bottom of the door and we could basically just put the, the regulator out on the bottom, which brings the window in on top, extremely set, right? Like this. So that would increase pressure up here. But that creates a problem because where the window is attached at two little points, we're putting now stress onto those points. And then those points may break. And well, we could reinforce those to be stronger. Then we put the stress on the two bars that go up and down. Well, we can reinforce those. Well, and then the weakest point is the window and the glass will shatter <laughs> when you slam the door, right? So we don't want that. So we can't do that. We can't put much pressure on this whole system here. The pressure is only supposed to be up and down, but not this way. So, and in order to keep this sealed, this door has a frame. It's just not on the door. The frame is up here. It's on the body. So right up here, we actually have a groove inside the body there. And when I close this door all the way, then this window goes into that groove. So we run the window up in here. And now we can, now it's sealed on this seal as well as up in there. Now it's good. Now the window can't come out. It can't go in, it stays in place and it seals properly. So. But because we run it up in here, we gotta lower it so that we can open the door. Um, if it would not lower, well, a variety of things can happen. Um, the glass could break. Usually it does not when you open the door, but we're putting some force on. Um, uh, when the glass comes out, it can damage trim right here. It can make scratches there. It can do damage to the window regulator. 
that's another possibility there. So th there are some options. And if the glass doesn't come down, instead if the window stays up and you open it and the window is still up when you close it, then the window will be above <coughs> the frame here. And um, on the Model S, it's actually pretty bad. Here on the Model 3, it's a little less of an issue, it seems like. But on, the, on our Model S, I know this, it's pretty high up and you, you probably don't close that window. If you slam the door, there's a pretty good chance you bust the window or you bust something on the regulator. Can you help prevent this thing from breaking this regulator? Not really, because like I said, the usual opening and closing puts a lot of stress on it. In the winter time, you can run your climate control, you can preheat your cabin, um, or you may even have to use the defrost so it blows full blast. And and that would uh, melt the ice around the edges of the door so we don't have this extra stress there so that is what you can do in the winter time also in the winter time what i do rather than just grabbing the handle and pulling the door open i just grab the handle and pull lightly on it so let's close it here pull lightly on it just so the window lowers and then once the window lowers i start pulling because i don't want to just pull on it because like I said, it probably opens, but the window may not go down and you put extra stress on the regulator. You may do damage to the trim up here. You may break the window. So be careful in the winter time. Other than that, you can't really do much. There's not like any maintenance or something you can do. You cannot use your door, <laughs> but that's probably not really an option. So now let's take a little bit of a closer look at uh, the regulator and see what actually breaks on those regulators. So I took some footage uh, while I was working on our Model S on the window regulator. I fixed it uh, one time initially, and I have a, a long video about that in detail where you can see how to uh, remove it, repair it, and replace it. I did that without parts at the time, so that's a really good video if you need to know how to get this window regulator out and back in and possibly repair without parts. So that is one of the videos you want to go watch. But then I took other footage because that repair, because I didn't use any parts, it basically lasted a year, about 15,000 miles or so we put on the car, which is not bad. I mean, it, it was just labor and my labor is cheap. <laughs> so, but then it broke again. And uh, the second time around, I needed parts. And so I repaired it again. And then later again, uh, another door broke or window regulator broke, uh, just out of, out of nowhere. I don't know, we just opened the door and window came down, we closed the door, the window went up and I heard something pop and that was it. And so I needed to uh, replace another window regulator, I had to pull it out. And so I took some footage while I was doing this. So this may not make all kind of sense like in a nice video where it all goes nice and smooth. So, but this is the, the footage that I have that I'd like to show you where you can see um, what happened to those uh, window regulators. And then we'll look at the options what, that you have, what you can do, how to either repair or replace these regulators. If your window drops down on the Model S and you pull your window regulator out and you found the cables of the pulleys and possibly disconnected at the trolley, like right there or there, one thing to inspect is this right here. See how this cable here is not really held in place like this one here. So here this is held in place, this little nut looking thing at the end of the cable. While over here, it is not. There's actually a piece of plastic broken off. And so when the window drops, it really jerks on this cable. And if there's a little bit of tension lost, this here can pop out real easy and then it will drop. This happens real easy in the winter time if your window is frozen. That is probably what caused this piece of plastic to break off on this trolley here. And these trolleys you can't buy from Tesla. You can only get the whole regulator. You may be able to get a used regulator or a trolley itself online on eBay. So I was able to get the cables back on here on all the pulleys, everything. But the motor here, that's where the motor goes. This did not line up in the door with these holes here the holes uh, where it mounts to the door. It was about a half an inch too high. And that led me to believe that we, the problem must be in here because this cable just goes out the bottom 
and out the top and so that this needed to be turned so I get a little bit more distance towards the top so this piece comes down. But as I opened this up, took the motor off, I seen this here. You see this gray little ferrule there and you see this uh, coming in there. So this is not right. This, this little uh, ferrule here is actually supposed to have a lip up here and that lip is supposed to catch out there. Let me show you that on another one. So this here is a good one and you can see here we got the cable and this is this little ferrule right here and that's how this is supposed to be like this. And if that lip here on top, if this breaks off and the cable can go in, then uh, the location of this bracket where the motor is will be in the wrong position. So on the broken one, what I need is this here, even though this is uh, probably broken too. I think this is supposed to be one piece with this right here. <laughs> but if I could just get this piece here, this little gray one right here, and get it on the other one, I would be fine and it would work again, at least for some time. I got the door apart, got the window regulator out, and uh, here's my spare. Well, that's the door from our salvage, my parts department, and I was able to get the window regulator out of here. It was a little more difficult since the window was not in the correct position to release the little plastic snap thing that uh, holds the window on one end. But I got them out and this here is my collection of stuff. This one here is the one I took out of the salvage. We look at that in a second. So we'll look here, one, two, three pieces, the ferrule, one, two, three pieces on that. And, and that is the issue. What the actual issue is, is that this here slides through this into that. And uh, it's supposed to stop right there. Um, this piece right here at the end, this, this inner metal sleeve here is supposed to stop right there. But this here right there is what's holding it. And obviously that don't work anymore on this. Here on this one, it would still hold. It's, I can't slide it on there, but for how long is the question. Well now here, our spare part, our brand new one, <laughs> well, how do we look here? Well, not much better. There's a piece. There is a piece. You can see the edge and there's a piece. It's three pieces just like the others. But this metal sleeve, this rusty thing right now is still stuck in this little gray that you see right there. This little gray is this part. I mean, this, this and this, they're supposed to be one piece. But so currently this one here is still working the way it is. So I don't have anything else. I'm gonna put this one in for right now and uh, well, probably replace it later again. What the heck, you know? But uh, we kind of need a window back in there. So I'll put this in and I just need to round up some of these uh, ferrules here. Now, now this one's gotta go back in, back together. The window regulator is in. And that seems to work. All right, so that's a good start. Let's see here. Runs down. Runs up. Close, perfect. So, um, it was a little tough to get the motor in. Um, that means the cables are off a little bit due to that uh, thing, that ferrule broken. But uh, we got it back together. It's working. If it's good for another year or so, that makes me happy. When it comes to repair or replace, well, your options are basically uh, get a new window regulator. That is your option to get one from Tesla. I'm not 100% positive what they sell today, if they sell it complete with the motor only, or if you can get them separate, uh, just the regulator without the motor. Um, Things change throughout the years. The, the, the regulator has been uh, changed and improved a little bit. So as you get the latest and greatest from Tesla, you may actually get a good regulator and that will be the last one you put in. But you may have to spend, I don't know, three, four, five hundred dollars because it comes with a motor. I don't know. So you would have to check with Tesla, but this is definitely an OTC part and over the counter part. So you can just go to Tesla and they can give you a price. And if you like that part, uh, that price, then you just uh, purchase it from Tesla. 
Another option is if it is uh, the front doors, front driver and passenger side, uh, they're available aftermarket now from Dorman. Dorman makes an aftermarket uh, and it's an improved design, they say, where that one ferrule that has a tendency to break is a little bit different, a little stronger, a little bigger. Um, so, and you can get the regulator only and they're around $60. So they're not bad at all. I don't know how good they are or how long they last. So don't blame me if you buy one and it breaks. Okay. <laughs> but for 60 bucks, it's definitely a great deal. Um, unless Tesla sells you a brand new regulator without motor for 40 bucks. Probably not, <laughs> but check with Tesla. Tesla parts prices are actually usually pretty good. The problem is they don't sell you uh, individual parts. They always sell you complete assembly. So I'm pretty sure they only sell you a regulator with motor, which is several hundred dollars probably. And so, yeah, you could get this uh, Dorman regulator off the market from an auto parts store for around $60. That's where I seen them online anyway. So that would be probably a good option, but I only found them for the front doors. There's nothing for the rear doors. <laughs> so what do you do with the rear doors? Because those break too. I haven't found any aftermarket uh, regulators for the rear doors yet, so they may come out at some point. Uh, one would think because they break too, they just don't break as often because obviously the, the driver's door is the most commonly used door and then probably the passenger door is the next commonly used door unless maybe the, the rear driver side is also actually very commonly used as the driver gets in the car but has some stuff that the driver puts on the rear seat, right? So, um, but I haven't found any rear. Uh, window regulators. So you can definitely get it from Tesla. I'm sure Tesla has, sells you one gladly. <laughs> um, or you can see if you can repair it depending on what is broken. Um, so that ferrule that breaks, you can get uh, an, a ferrule from Gruber Motors in Arizona. Um, they're not cheap. They're about 20 bucks a ferrule. And uh, I was going to order some. I thought, oh, maybe I ordered two or three of those, you know. And uh, I mean, what can the shipping be for a little part like this? I mean, you throw this in an envelope, you can throw a handful of those in an envelope and just mail it up here for a couple dollars. Well, um, I think they were 18, 19 or 20 bucks a piece for a ferrule. I think I wanted two, makes 40 bucks. And then they added something like $25 in shipping. <laughs> and uh, that just blew me over. I mean, then we're looking at about, uh, I don't know, somewhere around $65 or so to get two of those ferrules. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I didn't order them. So I don't know. Uh, the, the ferrule definitely will last longer because that is made out of aluminum. I'm not 100% positive um, how this is. It's easy to install. That is not the problem. But there's a slot in the ferrule on the side so that you can put it over the cable because you can't cut the cable or anything. And I'm not sure if that slot couldn't be a problem at some point where that ferrule maybe vibrates and turns and comes into the perfect position for the cable to slide out. So I don't know, but that is an option. It's well, it wasn't cheap. The freight, I mean, I, I mean, hello, it's like for less than $5, you can ship a handful of those and they want like 20 or 25 shipping. So I didn't order them. <clears throat> And so for that money, if I compare that uh, ferrule to the price of a complete new regulator aftermarket for $60, I think I would take the complete new regulator. Um, because if you do the ferrule, everything is still old except the ferrule. If you get a new regulator, at least the whole regulator is new. It's supposedly improved. You just put your old motor on. So that's the option there, except on the rear, no option. Um, you can get parts from eBay. Uh, there's tons of parts on eBay. Um, recently, somebody was looking for a rear door, um, left side, driver side, I believe. And uh, there wasn't any. <laughs> Nobody had one. I don't know if either all the cars get crashed on that side and they're all damaged or if everybody just needed that same regulator because because and so there, there wasn't any available at least not in North America I've seen a couple in Europe so that was kind of interesting um, but eBay would be your other option and then it depends on what is broken actually because <clears throat> you can order a different regulator from a different door and take parts off that regulator to repair your regulator um, because maybe your trolley is broken and not your ferrule or maybe both are broken who knows so if you order a used regulator it usually comes with a ferrule that's not new for sure maybe even already uh, on the way out broken it may last you never know I mean 
I did install an old regulator into our car and I don't know, I'm not sure how long it's gonna last. We'll find out, right? Uh, so if you can do the labor yourself, it's not too bad. If you have to pay somebody, it kind of sucks if you have to pay multiple times for labor. But so these are your options. You can get either a new regulator for the front doors. You can just get a ferrule and repair uh, your regulator. If that's all that is broken, you can get uh, a used regulator from eBay, usually for any other doors. Um, or you can order a different regulator from a different door if, if that one for your door is not available and you can use parts of that. You just got to make sure that you get the correct part because obviously they're different from side to side. So the trolleys will be different and then they're different from front to rear. So there, there's differences, uh, you know, with cable length and the trolleys and so on and so forth. So you want to check into that closely if you feel unsure about it. You can always go to Tesla. You may have to buy the whole thing with motor and pay a little more money, but at least you got an original part back in there. So, all right. So these are about the options. That's about all I got. That's about all I know about these dang things. I worked on too many of them already. Um, and uh, well, <clears throat> I always get them working somehow, uh, patch them together somehow. So far I have yet to buy a new part. Uh, obviously I never bought those ferrules. I never um, ordered a new regulator complete, not aftermarket or from Tesla, since we have the salvage still out here and I still got some parts of there. I was able to steal some parts from there, but you probably don't have a salvage Tesla laying around, right? <laughs> so, and I'm about to run off window regulator parts on that one too, because yeah, they sell and uh, uh, on ours, there, one, of, one of them was definitely damaged, I remember. And I think the other three were okay, but I sold some parts. I needed some parts for our Tesla. <laughs> so window regulator side, uh, I think I'm out of window regulator parts on that. And uh, I need to repair maybe one, but well, I can't spend that money on those ferrules. I'm sorry, that is way overpriced. <laughs> If I maybe stop by in Arizona someday and I can pick them up <laughs> just because I'm there. But I think it's ridiculous that they want uh, 20 or $25 for freight. Well, okay, let's get over this. <laughs> so anyway, so if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you go and subscribe right now. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our coming videos. Give us a thumbs up for this video and all the other videos you're going to watch from us. Um, we have more repair videos. There's a ton of repair videos. Well, a ton. There's several repair videos. <laughs> Got quite a few uh, doing some repairs on the Model S as well as on the Model 3. And there are more coming. So make sure you're, you hit that notification bell that you get notified when those come out. We also have, as I pointed out earlier, we have a, a wintertime driving videos um, with the Model 3, the Model S, 2020 Chevy Bolt, 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. Um, we have we drive those in extreme cold and snow. Uh, we also have summertime driving videos, but most people are uh, mainly afraid of the winter time and the cold. And while well, we're here in Montana and we have some extreme cold and extreme snow at times, and we have many videos where we do actual road trips, 300 miles <laughs> during snowstorms, winter weather advisories and all this stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, all kinds of crazy things, but it's real life. And you can see these are our daily driver vehicles. So we drive those. That's why the Model S is gone because my wife drives that car every day. So it doesn't matter what the weather is and if it's summer or winter. So go check that out. And also there's a link down below in the description for our uh, Red Bubble store. We got some t-shirts and stuff there. Maybe you find something you like. In any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye.